this, roughly speaking, is the reason why coal took off. If you think about it, coal has a couple of inherent disadvantages. The biggest one of them is it's heavy. In addition to that, there are other ones. It doesn't smell particularly good when you're cooking with it, and again, it's heavy. So how do you build a nation around coal, around this, this hyper-energy dense but horrendously inconvenient fuel source? It's not like you can just pipe it in. It's not like you can just, you know, grab some and carry it home. What are you gonna do? Carry stone home with you every day? It's not, it's not convenient. However, the canal system, which is one of the most massively incredible engineering projects of all time, allowed narrow boats to carry coal cheaply and easily throughout the country. This is the reason why coal took off. Originally, Newcomb and steam engines made sense really only in places that already had plentiful, expendable coal, namely coal mines. And you know, you'd use it locally or start distributing it. However, as soon as it became viable to start transporting this coal around more and more, which of course made it more economically viable to mine the coal and to use Newcomb and steam engines, which of course started to create an incentive, a reason to develop a more efficient engine that used less of, you know, this, you know, your product that you're going to be selling. At this point, that's why and how it became viable to have steam engines elsewhere as well. The narrow boats and the canals and the relationship with coal are interesting to me because it helps to answer that question about why weren't steam engines invented earlier. One possible reason is, one, the coal system helped to develop them. I mean, New Coleman's engine became useful there first and then, you know, that kind of gave it the toehold it needed. But also, the context of coal, coal is heavy. How do you transport and use something heavy? Well, I mean, it had to wait until this. This is in some sense a, a stepping stone that had to come first. Something that really stands out to me as I look at these canals and coal barges is the fact that they show the way in which technology can be foundational or at least structural. Often when we think about technology, we think about what we call high technology. We think about cell phones, we think about laptops, we think about your handheld GPS devices, we think about things like that. But the truth is that you can't have any of those end consumer devices without a massive, massive structural network of technologies that undergird it and support it and hold it up. And that's just as true right here. When we think of the Industrial Revolution, we think of coal and coal-fired plants and factories and industrial engines and steam engines and all those sorts of things. But the truth is that you can't get any of those to work effectively until you have some more technologies that are far more basic. Something as simple as a canal and a boat. Or in this case, many canals and many boats. The point is that those higher levels of technology are undergirded by smaller, more basic levels of technology. And you want those structures to be good at every single level all the way through. Right now, I'm talking to you through an end technology called the internet. And all of it goes back to here, this boat that I'm sitting on. Well, not this specific boat, but all the boats like it. And also the dirt, because everything's made of dirt, and lots of things like that. If you think those are interesting ideas, hit the like and subscribe below and check back soon for more videos. Wanna buy some coal? First load's free.